Okay. Hey, okay, you're good to go. All right, great. All right, well, welcome everybody um, to the Conservation Commission meeting. This is a formal meeting and we have a quorum this evening. Um, and um, this is a special meeting because tonight we are going to um, just do the presentation of our natural resource inventory that uh, Jim Norgren has been working on for almost two years with us in the Conservation Commission. Um, so, but before we start, I wanted to first um, uh, just see if I can get um, folks to accept our minutes from our last meeting, which was July 17th. Do I have a member that accepts the minutes? Yeah, well, I'll accept them. Okay, and a second? I second. And a second, okay. Uh, and again, before we start, I wanted to ask Richard Post to share with us the good news that the town of Trumbull received this week about sustainable Connecticut. We found out a couple of days ago that we got the uh, bronze level. So we, we did obtain that, which is good. So there's a logo. We, we have, you know, we have some potential funding opportunities uh, for the town now. Um, so there'd be, you know, some a PR. Um, we'll be, you know, contacting the press at some level to announce it. I think, you know, after Vicki um, and Rob, one of them, I think, has to sign, you know, the official acceptance, and then we'll go ahead and go with the, the PR process and look at the funding, and then next year we have a bunch of other stuff planned to, to go aim for silver. So that'll be a smittle which will be due again, probably in August. Okay. So that's great. We're gonna head forward and move that's forward. Great news. It was a lot of work by a lot of people. And I know two of the drivers are on here tonight, Kevin Malone from the um, Trumbull Nature and Arts Center and uh, Pam Roman, uh, she's also on. And they, uh, along with uh, Richard, were really uh, hard workers. Uh, on this application for sustainable CT. So it paid off. So thank you very much, everybody, for your work. Um, so uh, without further ado, I would like to begin the, um, the presentation. Um, Jim Norgren, uh, is, are you on, Jim, to present for us? Hopefully Bill can pull him up. Uh, he should be in as a panelist right now. I'm not sure if he's hearing us. Mm -mm -mm. Currently muted. I see him on there. So, uh, uh, there. Okay, there he is. Okay, I just saw you release your uh, microphone. So I think yeah, he started his screen sharing. Excellent. Okay, so I will give the floor to Jim. I'm very excited to see this. <laughs> and so again, this is our Conservation Commission meeting. So this is the first time we're seeing um, this report uh, completed. Um, we would really love to, um, after we review this and share this with some town staff, uh, we'd also like to um, have Jim present this to a Zoom for the town folks. So people can, Trumbull residents can get on and. Uh, see the treasures that we have in this town. Yeah. So um, so this will be our first viewing of this uh, report. So Jim, I'll leave it to you. Uh, I don't hear him. Does anybody hear him? No. 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 He didn't show on mute, so. I'm not sure if he's hearing us, maybe. Jim, can oops. Jim, can you hear us? I see you. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna let me do it to quick chat, see if he can. I don't see the chat on here. Okay, now I see him full screen. I see his dog. <laughs> and I see his cat. 
of course, everyone has to come in the room when you're on Zoom. Right. It happens. <laughs> I usually have them on my lap. Modern technology sometimes has glitches. Yeah. So. Jim, can, can you hear us? Just shake your head up and down if you can hear us. OK, so he can hear us. That's good. Okay. At the bottom of your screen in the audio button, uh, your audio control, there's a little carrot icon. Click on that and um, make sure your speakers are or your microphone is set to the correct microphone. If you're having trouble with that, there's also a test speaker and microphone button. It looks like he just bounced out. Maybe he'll try again. Does it make any difference if we all mute our? No. No, it's um. It looks like it's a microphone issue on his computer. Okay. He's coming back. My wife on her laptop a couple times had a problem, and I had to go in and select. You have the microphone for some strange reason. Jim, you might have to go into settings and select the microphone. I'm not sure where that, let's see. Yeah, Jim, in that um, carrot menu, if you um, click there, there should be a thing to um, test your speaker and microphone. And that'll play some audio and then ask you to speak something and you'll see the microphone levels bounce if it's working correctly. Jim, do you have a Windows PC? You know, Bill? Yeah, I wonder, I'm in, uh, on Windows 10, I'm in the microphone settings. And I wonder if his, I don't know if you can hear me or not, if his um, microphone is turned off for Dropbox. Jim, another thing you might want to try is switch to um, phone audio. So there's a selection there to switch to phone audio, and then that'll ask you to dial a telephone number with a code, and that'll use your phone as the microphone over the. Bill, I see you have your, your lead IT person there. Yeah, he was uh, just playing with a paper shredder, which is not convenient.
<laughs> Call me, 914. Is that must be Jim? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, Bill, I, I went into, if you uh, open up settings. Uh, wait, he just took the number away. I don't need that. I can do it. Um, Jim. Hello, Jim. Oh, oh. I've got Jim on the phone. Oh, you do? Okay. Okay, so while I have them up there on mute, um, so I wanted to uh, continue with my opening. Um, so for the meeting, so that we had a approval and a, a second, so I approved the minutes of the July 17th meeting, and I failed to introduce all of our panelists that are on tonight. So while we're waiting. Um, so we have uh, Barbara Crandall, who is our, um, our clerk for Conservation Commission, Richard Post, Kim DeCorpo, um, Tim Coughlin, and they are on the Conservation Commission along with me. Um, we've got Jim and Pam Roman. And, Hello. Yes. And there's Pam. Yes, I, I put up a, just a picture because I'm not fit to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, and then participants, let's see, who do we have? We have um, Richard Gerard, Rich Ruby, Mary Beth Thornton. Uh, I guess that's Mary, um, Mary Isaac probably, Louise Perkins, Kevin Malone, uh, Dawn and Cheryl. So if you guys can hang with us, go get yourself a cup of tea <laughs> so we can get our speaker up. Mary Ellen, do you want to approve the minutes from the other July 1st? Yeah, so the July 1st meeting was, um, uh, was a special- Can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can hear yeah. Okay. Okay, so hold on, because now I, I, I had a July 1st meeting. The Apollo uh, has landed. <laughs> a special meeting. So do I have a motion to approve the July 1st special meeting minutes? Sure, I'll approve. Okay, well, I have a second. I'll second. A second, okay, so make a motion to approve. Thank you. We'll approve the minutes of the July 1st meeting along with the July 17th meeting and Let's keep Jim going while we have him. Okay, yeah, who knows how long this will last. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Bill. You're welcome. So uh, you can't hear me too well, but I'll try my best. So, okay, so this is draft and we can make any changes, recommendations, uh, take anything out that you want to, right? Uh, we start by reminding people that um, an NRI is uh, allowed. Uh, the legislation says a conservation commission can inventory natural resources and do an open space index. And we spoke about the difference between an inventory and an open space index, and it's a matter of degrees. Um, we looked at open space uh, in this natural resource inventory. If a town's really undeveloped, you'd call it an open space index. If you're looking more at uh, land that's already protected, as in the case in Trumbull, and how to manage it, you call it a natural resource inventory. So we don't want to get hung up on the, um, on the difference because there really is none. But when, when 
uh, people ask, you know, why are you doing an inventory? Well, it's because, you know, we're supposed to by the statutes. And uh, what has more suasion is your own Trumbull's uh, POCD that talks about an NRI and says here, as you can see, developers should use it uh, for applications. And the second bullet point, it can be used to uh, determine what uh, open space should be acquired. So I think that's pretty cool that it's actually in the POCD. Again, in case there's pushback, not that there will be, but if there are any questions, you know, why are you doing this? Uh, that's the reason why. Um, going through briefly and simplifying what an NRI is, uh, the goals are simply, as the name implies, ID the natural resources, ID the threats, and then come up with recommendations or options and, or strat and strategies. Going through those three, and this is going to be all apparent to you, so I'll be brief, but the conservation values, and these would be the same in Trumbull or most uh, any town in the region, uh, your trees, your water uh, courses, uh, habitat, uh, greenways and hiking trails, and scenic vistas. The threats, especially in uh, Trumbull, uh, because it is so built out, are stormwater pollution and flooding and water pollution. Uh, development actually, uh, ironically, is less of a threat because you're fairly built out. Invasive plants are not as big a problem in your parks as, as they are in some other places. You'd be glad to know. Uh, lack of enforcement or the uh, uh, oversight is always a problem in any community. And then, although the NRI uh, does not focus on climate change, and that's really beyond the purview, that's really a national and international issue. You know, we, we do mention, of course, climate change, and especially for Trumbull, with heavier rains, you're going to get more flooding. The uh, recommendations or options and strategies, and these are going to be the same uh, that are uh, outlined in the POCD. Um, outreach to citizens and businesses. That may surprise you that that's up there at the top, but I think that might be the most effective uh, action that uh, we can take because in Trumbull you've got you know, 10,000, 12,000 homes pretty much built out, and if we can educate, if homeowners can be good stewards of the land, that'll go a long way to protecting your natural resources. Uh, secondly, you can acquire open space. We've got some parcels um, to, uh, to look at, although there isn't much more uh, vacant land in Trumbull. We can create hiking trails, that's always popular. Stormwater improvements, uh, enforce and expand regulations. I know you've talked about a steep slope ordinance and uh, always revegetating, you know, renaturalizing the town with vegetative buffers and, and street trees. So what we did was uh, surveyed uh, with field uh, surveys on the ground, uh, 52 parks and uh, open space parcels. And we worked off Steve Chapman's list, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, the green, as you can see, are the parks. The yellow, yellow is the other town open space. These are parcels that had been part of the land trust or had been uh, in other ways that the town had acquired them, a lot of times in subdivisions in the 70s. Uh, they're not officially designated as, as parkland. Um, I don't know if that means they can be sold or not, um, but we wanted to focus on those as well. The, uh, in red, we didn't look at Frog Pond because that's private. On the upper right, uh, the cemetery, we didn't look at because that's private. But the uh, little dialogue box on the upper right says, since only one or two percent of Trumbull is still vacant, um, green landscaping with uh, uh, homeowners and citizens and businesses and institutions and schools might be um, the most effective uh, option. Just quickly going through the list, uh, we, didn't, we stopped at under two acres. Uh, 
so if it was too small, we didn't uh, survey it. But uh, we looked at these 52 uh, town-owned parcels of open space and town parks. And while the uh, inventory is over 600 pages, um, I want to explain that. With 52 parcels to look at and at least 10 pages of maps, you're already up to 500 pages. <laughs> so I would view the second part of the inventory um, as, as more a, uh, an, almost a nature guide for any of the individual parks mentioned. The first 40 pages is going to be the summary. So that's, that's the way I would look at it. So I look at, uh, in this case, Beach Memorial and Twin Brooks Park. Just as an example of what we did with all 52, uh, we did the field surveys there, one, two, three, four, five visits. Uh, we identified the conservation values at Beach Memorial. So there are forests, there are trails, there are uh, wetlands. Uh, there's the floodplain, uh, which is important for flood control. Uh, sections of Booth Hill Brook run down the east side. There's a meadow, and uh, you can go on and, uh, and, and read the rest. Trails that can connect to the Trumbull High School, uh, beautiful scenic vistas, and I note remarkably free of, of litter and invasive plants because of good maintenance. The uh, threats, again, this is an example. We've done it with all 52 parks and parcels. Flooding, neighbors continue to uh, clear uh, right down to the pond, which creates pollution. You've got mugwort coming into that beautiful meadow you're restoring. There was the proposed pool that could have resulted in uh, tree cutting. Litter is always an issue, but most of the parks were really well-maintained and very litter-free. And climate change is going to uh, cause more flooding. In fact, uh, with FEMA money, one of the homes right uh, just east of uh, Beach Memorial was bought out, along with another one uh, by uh, Canoe Brook Lake um, because of constant flooding. And that, unfortunately, is only going to get worse. The recommendations would be to allow uh, buffers to grow up around the ponds, some of them have nice buffers, educate the neighbors, get the mugwort out, bird boxes, fishways. Actually, there are al alewives that migrate all the way up to that dam, and Steve Gebhardt of uh, Connecticut DEEP uh, would love to work with the town to put in a fishway to let them get uh, further upstream into uh, uh, Pinewood Lake, I think it is. We could connect trails. We could add signs to explain the value of native plants and uh, continue to limit fertilizer and pesticide. So this is just an example, again, of what you can find in pages you know, 40 through 600. And if nothing else, and I hope a lot of these recommendations are followed, I, I, I think this could be a good nature guide uh, for citizens who want to know more about their parks and more about some of the undiscovered uh, non-park open space. So for each of the 52 parcels, we uh, did these uh, GIS maps, satellite elevations, topo, streams and wetlands, the environmental communities, that's mainly what uh, the survey uh, focused on on the ground, and surrounding open space looking for connections. At the end of every one of these 52 uh, write-ups, we, uh, we have an inventory of all the plants, uh, found there, and over time, um, observations by citizens could be added to this. The um, one example, it was mentioned in the previous slides that the POCD recommended using the NRI for applications, and here I think is a, a neat example of how we did it with the park proposal, and. You know, we're not saying, here's an alternative that we came up with by looking at the natural resources around uh, the area where the pool was proposed. So uh, number two, that wetland there, when you look at it, it's, it's really just a drainage ditch. So a low value wetland like that, you know, maybe that's a better place to expand the parking lot instead of, we looked at the wetland number three, that's a high quality wetland. So shift some of the, uh, uh, pavement 
you know, into the low value wetland. We looked at where the pool was proposed. They would uh, require cutting of 70 mature trees. You don't want to do that, of course. We looked at uh, where the playground is, and that's a lot of fill. That had been a wetland, but there's a lot of fill there. So this recommendation would be, you know, protect the valuable wetlands, uh, construct in the degraded wetlands, swing the pool um, counterclockwise, and protect those uh, that beautiful grove of 70 mature trees. So again, just an example as the POCD is recommending how the inventory can be used uh, for land use applications. In addition to the field surveys, we of course looked at all the previous studies we can get our hands on, and here they are. Most of these are concentrating on water, and that's a function of the Pequannock River being so important and Long Island Sound being so important, and uh, watershed groups focusing on water. Um, but we don't necessarily, uh, just because those were studied, we don't want to necessarily make that the focus of uh, the recommendations. Maybe we do, maybe we don't, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not going to go through these except for the POCD at the very top. And again, because the POCD is done by sit your citizens, approved by your town council, I think the POCD has the most influence and, and is the best guide. The others are important, of course, but uh, some of the uh, watershed-based plans are focusing on, on regional issues, uh, which are important, but again, the POCD, I think, um, has the most influence for your town. Um, going through all these reports, you'll find common themes you know, the natural resources are going to be the same across most towns, the threats are going to be the same, and the actions recommended are going to be the same. So if you summarize all those recommendations, over 100, you come out with the same things. Um, open space protection, stormwater uh, pollution prevention, planting trees, green landscaping, and stronger regulation enforcement. The Pequannock River Watershed Plan uh, focused a lot on uh, stronger regulation. And again, that's your decision as a town, and that's something you know you want to talk about and, and decide how you want to go forward on that. The uh, POCD, again, this is the most important one, and, and it back, the reason I keep emphasizing is this is because it backs up all the recommendations in the NRI. So your own POCD says more open space, more open space, more open space, reduce stormwater runoff, work with residents to improve your water resources, stream side buffers, stream side buffers, et cetera, et cetera, on and on and on. So you get the theme. I uh, point this out because uh, people are surprised that the Pequannock River is listed as impaired in the town of Trumbull, and this is why there's so much emphasis by these uh, watershed plans on the Pequannock River because of a high level of bacteria and total suspended solids. Uh, most of the river flowing through Trumbull is polluted, and I know that came as a surprise when I mentioned it to the Conservation Commission uh, originally, so it must be a surprise to, uh, to most citizens. And this is a kind of an interesting, almost an ethical question. Do you care if the river's polluted? In a sense, of course, you do, because it runs into Long Island Sound, uh, and, and uh, in another sense you do, because it's created by uh, our own stormwater runoff. Um, on the other hand, we'll go through some of the, the uh, actions that can be taken to help clean up the river. They're very costly. So the way I look at it is, is if you're doing things to protect your own local streams, you're protecting your local lakes, uh, that's important to neighbors and citizens, and, and, and the steps you're taking to protect uh, the water resources planting trees and vegetation, you know, those have, have other benefits aesthetically to the town, um, 
good for wildlife, good for air, et cetera. So it's just a kind of an interesting question. You know, all the studies focus on the river, the river's polluted. How does Trumbull want to deal with it is a question, you know, for you all. Uh, now, a more immediate uh, impact for the citizens of Trumbull is the flood risk, which is, again, going to only be getting uh, – greater um, with the high level of pavement and more storm runoff, more frequent and heavier precipitation. And this is uh, the flood uh, risk map. And uh, it does not take, it, I, I think this is 2018. I'm not sure if this flood risk mass, map has been updated or not. Um, I know they are updating these. The point is it's already out of date. And with heavier precipitation, it's only going to get worse. So Many of the recommendations, preserving open space, uh, renaturalizing with trees uh, and plants and, and uh, flowers, uh, et cetera, um, will not only benefit the Pequannock River, Long Island Sound, aesthetically be nice to the town, improve property values, et cetera, they will also help ameliorate uh, the flood risk, which I know is a big issue in town. So let me move to the recommendations. And again, I'm just throwing these out. These are, uh, if they're adopted, they're all voluntary and I would, would like uh, input on this. But I think you'll see there, they dovetail with what the POCD has been recommending and they'll dovetail with those other 100 recommendations and all the other studies of Trumbull. So I know this is a little wordy. Uh, I don't expect you to read it. But as I said, because Trumbull is mostly developed, the answer to uh, issues with natural resources is going to be with the citizens. There's not so much open space left to buy. Um, so if we can, through education and outreach, uh, get citizens, and that includes schools and institutions and businesses, and uh, properties owned by the town to be uh, renaturalized, you know, we have a, a good chance at improving flooding, uh, stormwater pollution, water pollution, in addition to all the other things that trees bring. So an outreach program uh, would uh, hope, hope to reduce pesticide fertilizer use, increase use of native plantings, I mean, imagine if every yard planted trees that would, you know, with 12,000 homes in Trumbull, environmental problems would go away. That's not going to happen, but we can, we, can, we can make an effort. Now, at the bottom of this, I think this is interesting to point out that your Department of Public Works already has a, an excellent brochure that can be used uh, as a, the basis for a series of mailings. Um, and postings on the town website and any sort of social media outreach you want to do. Um, also, there's already a pesticide and fertilizer management plan. I wasn't able to get my hands on it, but I'm sure it's good that the town is using at Twin Brooks and Unity Park, which could be models. And then finally, uh, the Green Streets program can be used um, as a mo uh, uh, to inform how plantings can be done uh, on Trumbull streets and parking lots. You know, it, it, it comes down to planting more trees. Second recommendation, and since there's so few places remaining um, in Trumbull that are, are not developed or protected, the, this acreage isn't big, but I think Symbolically, uh, visually, it'd be very important for the town. I'm thinking of the, the two farms along uh, Daniels Farm Road, Plasco Farm, and the other one, which I can't pronounce. You know, I'm not sure if those are going to be around in another generation. Uh, at the top is, is that simple infill lot, uh, one acre that is for sale at Parlor Rock, which would really disturb the experience for people uh, hiking on the rail trail there. Uh, we mentioned at the last meeting the Hidden Pond development, which is already flooded, and I can only imagine how uh, much more flooding would be created if they do construction there. Uh, 
and I'll show in a few more slides how that could create a greenway. Uh, the Hardy property is right next to uh, the Pequannock uh, River Valley Park, so that would be a nice expansion. Uh, the Pert House is on Daniels Farm Road, that beautiful old Victorian. There's a lot of open space behind it. Uh, the Chrisick lots are uh, the cider mill right across from uh, the town hall, and uh, there is a nice interconnection that can be made there. And I don't know what the church is up to, but it, it would be nice to inquire about their plans for that 55-acre uh, parcel in the middle of the Booth Hill Greenway, the Gate of Heaven Cemetery. So uh, a little more on the, okay, um, I'll get to more open space in a sec. The third recommendation, we've talked a lot about stormwater. And one thing we can go back to is just continue to emphasize your own town's stormwater management plan. Uh, Every town has to have a management plan for stormwater, as you know, under the uh, uh, Federal Clean Water Act. It can be viewed two ways. It can be viewed as an unfunded mandate. This is very expensive. On the other hand, if you kind of view it as a, a way to go forward as repairs are being made, as things are being constructed, uh, over time, a lot of these stormwater improvements can be implemented just through basic maintenance without a lot of uh, capital costs. So catch basins are the goal, uh, the town's goal is to clean them all annually. You have over 8,000, you're cleaning about 10% now. Uh, fortunately, they're targeting the what they think are the 10% most uh, critical ones as far as getting filled up uh, and pumping those out so the catch basin can, can function. You know, that that goal of 100% cleaning would be wonderful. Uh, by the regulations, you're monitoring impaired waters now for bacteria, and it's recommended uh, that you monitor for nitrogen, which would pick up more of the stormwater runoff. Um, it's also recommended that these impervious areas uh, be disconnected. That means, you know, taking up pavement and filling in with natural vegetation. You've done one to date, that's the Long Hill Green Lot where the parking lot was changed to porous pavement. Um, but you've got, I, I believe it's 1,500 acres of directly connected impervious area. So that's a, a big hurdle. Um, and then generally, on town property and with education to homeowners, we want to get stormwater retrofits, which would be revegetating with vegetative swales, you know, this rain gardens, bioretention basins, anything to slow down uh, stormwater and let nature filter it. The Pequannock River watershed plan uh, specifically looked at spots where stormwater retrofits could be done. And they mention, and I have a, a map I'll show you, the Booth Hill Greenway and Unity Park. Uh, in our own field surveys, and I'll show you some pictures, we saw a lot of erosion on the steep slopes on the western edge of the Pequannock River Valley Park. That's creating a lot of stormwater runoff and, and maybe is uh, a big contributor to the pollution in the, in the river. Um, as I mentioned, that Long Hill Green Lot, uh, that pavement was converted uh, to pervious pavement. So that's an example of what you've done and can con continue to do. And of course, the old mine uh, rain garden and restoration of that stream bank uh, was done in 2013. That's an example of restoration you can do uh, over and over again in the future. Um, and we came up with a couple sites, Mary Bill Stream, uh, which has been filled in, could be restored, and the Indian Ledge uh, streams, which have also been impinged on, uh, would be good sites for restoration. Training and regulation, I know you talked about a steep slope ordinance. Um, the watershed management plan uh, recommended additional training for officials, 
so they can recognize uh, wetland issues. Uh, your wetland law um, could be uh, enforced or strengthened up to you. Again, uh, mitigation efforts for construction. We've got some examples where silt fences are collapsing. And then uh, on all these uh, six uh, town-owned properties, there's a lot of neighbors just continuing to cut the lawn. And uh, those are, you know, ex those are instances where the town really should send a nice letter to the neighbor saying, and they should post it so the neighbor knows, you know, please stop mowing our town parks. Hiking trails, we've got a couple examples, and I'll show you those. Uh, very popular now. Tashua Tree Farm, I walked with Tim. Uh, Park Street, Murray Bill, the Greenway has more areas where people can, uh, should be able to enter and, uh, and park uh, than they have right now. Uh, Beach Memorial can be connected to the school, which would be great for kids to be able to go over there and do nature study. And then uh, Chernak and Hidden Pond. We can, as recommended in the POCD, uh, connect some greenways. They're, again, being mostly built out. There are many opportunities, but the Tashua Tree Farm uh, is a great uh, opportunity to connect with Aquarian's permission uh, to uh, Tashua Knoll's recreational area. Invasive plants have not been uh, as big a problem as I thought there would be. Um, here's a list of, you know, the, the one I, that really leaps uh, forward to me is that meadow you're restoring at Old Mine Park, which is such a, a beautiful uh, meadow, but you're having mugwort creep in there. Um, we can talk about how to get rid of that. Uh, and then your hemlock trees are, as they are all across the Northeast, are suffering from woolly adelgid uh, and aphid from China. And it is possible to treat some uh, hemlocks because they're so important to um, the uh, the river valley there because they grow in the shade and they, they uh, shade and protect uh, the water quality in the Pequannock River. Lastly, again, this is beyond the purview of the NRI and really, you know, what you're doing and their, um, their other uh, groups that are working on climate change, although this is probably pertinent for sustainable Connecticut, just the laundry list of uh, things that all towns can be doing um, to ameliorate climate change. And again, I, to make it relevant for citizens in Trumbull, while climate change is a, is a global issue, it will directly impact uh, uh, Trumbull citizens with increased flooding. So those are the recommendations. I'm going to go through now just a couple examples of uh, what we talked about, open space acquisition and trails, and then I'll finish up with some uh, examples of stormwater damage and what you might be able to do with it. Can I stop there for questions or comments? I've been going on and I'm kind of zoomed out. Uh, questions, anybody, comments? Mary Ellen? No, we've only had two, uh, uh, actually two comments from Don Cantafio that this is a great report. Well done and thank you. And Mary Beth Thornton also said this is a really great, great report. Well, good. Let's hope it, uh, it, I know it won't gather dust, right? Not with you uh, all uh, <laughs> taking it up. Okay, um, let me continue. I've got about 10 more minutes to run through if you can bear with me. Um, acquisitions. Uh, I did reach out to uh, Rena, and we didn't really get much of a dialogue going as far as what they're doing on the uh, land acquisition com uh, committee. And, you know, we should uh, reach out to them. And for all I know, they're planning on acquiring all these. And I mentioned at the last meeting, there is now $900 million a year authorized by Congress for open space acquisition across the United States um, in the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So that's new, and Trump signed that, and that might be a way to fund some of this. So that little one acre uh, at Parlor Rock, um, 
I don't know if that's still for sale, but that would be a shame to see a big house there. These are the uh, uh, parcels I mentioned for to look at for potentially for acquisition. And you can see the cemetery in the upper right. On the far right is Hidden Pond. Just to the right of Route 8 are the three farms, which I think would just be so important visually and culturally and historically to protect in town. And then the others, uh, that's Parlor Rock on the upper left. And then the two at the bottom are the ones I mentioned that abut uh, the Paquanic River Park. And the far left is the one behind the, uh, the cider mill. Um, I talked about uh, the greenways. Uh, I walked this with Tim, Tim's favorite place, the old Tashua tree farm. But one nice thing about uh, using GIS, you can see these connections that are not always apparent from the ground. There are, you know, some, maybe they're just deer trails, but you could put a beautiful trail network in there. Uh, there's parking access with the Quarian's permission. You could get, uh, you could hike all the way to the Easton Reservoir, and you can hike all the way to Tashua Knoll's uh, recreational area. So that would be fantastic. And then on the right, we mentioned this at the last meeting, that hidden pond development. Uh, the other nice thing about using GS is, GIS is you can look beyond uh, one town's border, and it was nice to discover, I didn't know, that the town of Shelton had protected one, two, three, four, five parcels directly abutting uh, the town-owned parcels that are shown there in lime green. And again, you can see in the blue uh, watercourses going through that property that it's a very waterlogged property. Uh, it's already, uh, the culverts are already flooding, and I think it would be nice to protect that to create that greenway and trails, but you could justify, I think, protect, uh, protecting it just to prevent flooding of all the neighbors. Another nice greenway, I think we mentioned this at the last meeting, again, uh, looking cross town, the Hallaby Preserve, which has a small uh, trail uh, going through the center of it, all these neighbors uh, on the cul-de-sacs could be hooked up there if we blaze trails and put signs up and it would be nice to be able to uh, work with the town of Shelton to make a nice destination over to, uh, is it Trap Falls uh, Reservoir, if I got the name right? And then finally, uh, at Unity Park, uh, opportunity for trails for people while they're watching a ball game. And another example on the right where uh, there's a small existing trail at Davido, but it could be linked up with the other town-owned properties just to the south. I'm going to go over now the stormwater issues that came up. And uh, I had uh, qualms about showing this because it's uh, kind of, uh, it's examples of, I don't know what, what, what the reason. I don't know if it's homeowners building uh more than they should, clearing more than they should on top. I don't know if it's um, poor stormwater control. Uh, so I, I have qualms about second thoughts about showing this, but uh, Mary Ellen said, "Go ahead." So these hey, are the yes, uh, Jim. There's a, a um, Rob Labrande, our our town planner, has his hand raised. Rob, do you have a question? Yeah, thanks, Jim. I just wanted to clarify, uh, Jim. You were talking about Hardy Lane. And um, they just went in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission for an A24 referral for that parcel there. So they did finish their first step, and now they're going in front of town council uh, for hopefully a uh, for the final uh, uh, approval or um, submission to the commission. So they're they're Great. they're moving forward with that. I like the other plans that you had too. Those are definitely areas that. Um, the town should look at to uh, for the land acquisition committee too for the future as you know grants and how you were saying how there's going to be money available for acquiring property so that's this is definitely a good um, document for that thank you great thanks Th thanks for that uh, that input uh, so this is the Quantic River Valley and there's a lot of clearing right at the top uh, right to the edge of the park and it's resulted in these big gullies 
uh, flowing right down into uh, the river. And so a lot of suspended solids go with that. Uh, here are more pictures of uh, the Pequannock River uh, Park uh, showing these gullies going right down into the Pequannock River. The, uh, I have here, I've identified the hot spots along the western edge of the Pequannock River Valley Park, and I came up with 10 of them. Uh, because it's so steep, it's a challenge. And because building has been done right up to the edge, um, it's going to require uh, stormwater retrofits to hold back that stormwater before it gets into the river. Here, uh, Booth Hill also is surrounded by homes and streets, so it's really kind of a, a conduit for stormwater. And uh, because of that, and with more precipitation and uh, heavier rains, they call it flashiness, the flashiness of these uh, streams is going to increase and create more erosion. The Pequannock River Watershed Management Plan actually uh, noted that there were uh, good opportunities for stream water, uh, 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 stormwater retrofits and stream bank restoration all along the uh, Booth Hill uh, Greenway there. I just thought that was interesting and that was a regional plan of multi-towns, and they uh, singled out, uh, along with a couple others, the Booth Hill Greenway as uh, candidates for stream bank restoration and stormwater improvement. And that would help, again, if we don't care, and I know we do and we should about Long Island Sound, you know, we care as, as local citizens about Pinewood Lake, and this is all draining into Pinewood Lake. On the positive side, just a, this was a good example, I'm sorry it's fuzzy, of really good stormwater control at uh, Beach Memorial. It's simply riprap. You know, sometimes uh, it's as simple as backing up and dumping riprap uh, into these uh, eroded culverts to hold back the uh, suspended solids and the nitrogen and the phosphorus. The uh, enforcement, as I understand it right now, is on a case-by-case -case basis. So if complaints come in, uh, inspectors will come out. Um, I know from being involved in town government in my town, it's very, very difficult to enforce regulations on your citizens. The last thing you want to do is be fining uh, your citizens and voters. So it's a question, it's up to you how, how strongly, you know, is it going to be Passive, if you get complaints, you'll look, or are there going to be regular inspections? So in walking around, I was uh, surprised to see on the upper left, I think that's the town's Friar Lane, where there was a backyard clear cut, uh, which was a problem, and to make it worse, uh, dumping not only in the wetland uh, buffer, not only in the wetland, but actually into the stream there. Uh, in the Middle there, that's the uh, parking lot that was created at Mary Bill, uh, where this wetland was filled in. And I think uh, that was proposed for stream bank restoration, so it'll be nice to see that done. Uh, on the right is just an example of, you know, silt fences. And if you have, that's, that's a building on a, a very steep slope uh, by Tate Road, by the Pequannock River uh, Valley Park, uh, a silt fence cannot hold that back. Uh, so clearing on steep slopes is, is an issue, and it's up to you how you want to deal with it. The uh, other examples, um, in addition to um, wetland fill, are clearing on steep slopes. On the upper left is uh, Indian Ledges, where uh, the town has gradually pushed and pushed, and now the side of the hill is full of wood chips and going into that stream. Uh, Mary Ellen will recognize uh, the, the one at the bottom there, um, uh, just next to the Trumbull uh, Nature and Art Center, where a neighbor, everybody wants a nice view, I understand it, uh, clear cutting like that, um, exposing that rock right next to, uh, I think it's Fer Ferrers Brook. Um, is going to create is creating pollution, and on the upper right, 
is another example of uh, a building on a steep slope uh, by the Pequannock River Valley, and you can see how uh, the runoff there is uh, carrying stormwater. So uh, that's the conclusion. Um, one thing to uh, go forward with in protecting the water and controlling stormwater, as I said, is to begin with the, uh, your, your town stormwater plan. Um, that this is for uh, streets and other areas uh, that the town has jurisdiction over. The other part of that would be citizen outreach so that, again, with 12,000 homes, you've got a lot of parking lots, you've got a lot of driveways, a lot of sidewalks, a lot of roofs. Uh, it'll be a challenge, but through education, if people could hold back some of their stormwater with vegetation and the town can follow their stormwater management plan, um, that's the way to not only protect your water resources, but as I said, as you revegetate, you get all those other benefits uh, of uh, aesthetics, uh, wildlife habitat, cleaner air, shade, cooler temperatures. So just to review the stormwater plan, you've uh, increased testing of catchwater basins uh, in the last two years. I looked at the last two plans, and uh, we emailed back and forth with Tatiana a few times on this to make sure it was, it was all accurate. Uh, you've cleaned 10% of the basins. If you can clean more, uh, the goal is to clean 100%. As I mentioned, uh, you've disconnected one impervious area at the Long Hill parking lot. If you go forward as things are uh, redeveloped, um, it won't be such a high capital expense. Uh, the highway department's being trained once a year. You have a fertilizer plan. So uh, following that stormwater plan and then educating landowners to do the same, I think is uh, one of the best ways to protect the natural resources. At the bottom here are three important points, and then I'm done. Uh, these maintenance actions, as I said, are, can be viewed as an unfunded mandate. You know, why should we have to do this um, when it's Long Island Sound's problem? On the other hand, if you create the stormwater pollution, then you're responsible for it. So Connecticut DEP uh, mentions over and over again that they have funds to uh, work on stormwater control, stream bank restoration. And I think when you, one value, what I didn't, which I didn't mention about a natural resource inventory is it helps in fundraising. Um, governments and foundations want to contribute uh, and will only contribute to a project that has, uh, is well thought out, uh, is rational based on science, and is supported by the citizens. So when you show in, if you went to Connecticut DEP and said, you know, we recognize we have stormwater issues that are affecting us individual, individually with flooding and are affecting our river and our lakes and ultimately Long Island Sound, I think you'd have a good chance of uh, getting funding for restoration. The other two uh, recommendations here uh, as far as funding come out of the Quantic River Watershed Management Plan, and I'm not that familiar with them, but you could establish a stormwater utility. You know, a user fee is a fair way to raise money. On the other hand, it's very difficult to, to le levy a fee or raise taxes. And then uh, finally, by banding together regionally with the other towns in the watershed, uh, either by establishing a sewer authority, as they say here, or just an intermunicipal agreement to work together is another uh, great way not only to share information but to attract funding because uh, funders really want to fund uh, intermunicipally and work on solutions on a, on a watershed basis instead of a town basis only. So thank you for bearing with me. I know that was a lot to go through, and I know Zoom is um, not the best way to communicate, but um, here we are. Um, any questions, comments? And if you don't have them now, um, 
let Mary Ellen know so that I can incorporate them because this, you know, this really has to come from the Conservation Commission. I know we've been uh, keeping apprised uh, each other through PowerPoint presentations, and we had that hike at Misha Brook, and Tim and I uh, hiked at uh, Tashua Tree Farm so that the Conservation Commission members, you know, understand what we're doing in the field surveys, uh, but this really has to be your document. Yeah, Jim, I'm wondering, have any towns tried a GoFundMe type approach to uh, fund some of these things? Uh, I don't know. Not that I'm aware of. That, that seems, you know, what only what I've seen is that that seems to be, you know, unique uh, challenges that some people are facing that seem to get um, a lot of people's empathy and, uh, and they can, through tragedies, they're able to raise funds through GoFundMe. I'm not sure something like stormwater pollution control is going to pique anyone's interest. Again, I think, you know, if, if DEEP and the EPA are telling you as a town, you have to do something about your stormwater pollution through these MS4 requirements, then you can turn around and say, happy to do it. We've got a plan. Uh, help us with funding. Yeah. Hey, Jim, I got a question about land acquisition. Uh, you were talking about the federal funds that are, I guess, available or are last year's uh, budget, federal budget. Can you just go over that real quick? Yeah, it just was passed uh, a couple months ago. Uh, the uh, Republicans in the Senate uh, out west were in favor of it, uh, which is great. And uh, it's called the Land and Water Conservation Fund. It's, it's been there, I guess, since the 70s. It was supposed to be an offset to uh, offshore drilling, where they uh, would require oil companies to contribute to this. And in turn, that would be used to buy open space and kind of offset any negatives from energy development. But it was never funded, uh, fully funded. Mm -hmm. It was always underfunded. So it was uh, not viewed as a, uh, a really good chance of a, of a town getting it. But $900 million a year uh, is what they're funding now, which is in incredible. And uh, it would be and great I to take, get. I, I take it this would be a grant application through the town, correct? Right through the town. I guess a land trust could do it, but it's probably better coming from a town. And I would, I would uh, call Blumenthal. Okay. Right. Yeah. Your senator would. You know that would be uh, the direct conduit to this uh, to the funding. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Interesting. Idea. That's great. That's great. Um, any other questions? I don't have uh, any coming in on the Q and A from outside. Um, our our uh, chair of the uh, town council has asked if you could do this presentation for the town council. She says it's one of the best reports she's seen on this topic in 20 years. So she wants the town council to see this. And um, so I can get you the date for the meeting. Of course, it would be a Zoom meeting, November 5th. Uh, but I think it's important to begin to get this information out to as many people in the town as possible and, and seeing it from the, from on a, with a fresh set of eyes um, from Jim who doesn't live in Trumbull um, and sometimes you tend to appreciate things um, when you're coming from the outside and we see these things every day and we, we kind of take them for granted. But um, I think this was a great, uh, this is a great opportunity for us to have a document that we can use for planning and for conservation and for development. You know what I didn't mention uh, was how beautiful, uh, especially the east side of the Pequannock River Valley park is. Uh, so many trails in there, so many different types of uh, trees. 
and very few people. Same with Beach Memorial and Twin Brooks. It may look uh, crowded at the parking lot. As soon as I, I got a few feet into the woods, I was by myself. <laughs> and same with Old Mine Park, just really dramatic uh, trees and, and plants that I haven't seen in any other places. Hey, Jim, one more one question about stormwater uh, management as far as on the west side of the Bequanic Valley. I guess this is um, a situation where it's identified by the town, uh, budgeted for, and then implemented at some point in time. Uh, so I would imagine uh, it's through the new storm water regs that the engineering department for the town of Trumbull should be made aware or should be aware of this, correct? Well, uh, we, we can reach out to uh, Tatiana. Um, I guess the town maintains the park and uh, I'm not sure the arrangement on that. And maybe, maybe there's another example where there'd be some funding uh, from the state. And uh, right now, the, uh, the town is cleaning the catch basins, as I mentioned, street sweeping, uh, which I didn't mention. They're testing uh, what they call uh, dry weather outflows. So when you see water in a dry time, it's coming from some bad place. So they're testing those areas uh, and finding, uh, looking for septic failures. Uh, but I'm not sure if they're uh, looking at, at culverts. I know they've... Uh, GIS mapped uh, all the stormwater outfalls. Uh, I'm not sure if what I showed you is picked up in that uh, or not. Uh, it's something uh, we can learn from Tatiana. Right. What I really meant was, you know, on the west side where those steep slopes where the streets back up you know, right to the edge, uh, you know, some of those large culverts that are, you know, 30 years of uh, erosion and sedimentation. Um, I would imagine those are already identified with the engineering department through, you know, their uh, the stormwater management regs. Uh, but those would have to be identified and then, of course, budgeted, correct? Yeah, I'm not sure they're identified. And one way to look at it is uh, as repairs have to happen, you kind of do it on an ongoing basis, and that's the way you, you, you budget it as uh, kind of ongoing maintenance because it would be such a large uh, capital uh, expense up front that no town could afford it. So it's kind of going forward, you want to try to, use best management practices and uh, identify these areas, throw in riprap. Um, New York has a Trees for Tribs program where they'll give you uh, plantings that you can plant to restore the stream banks. Um, I'm not a, an engineer, so I don't know, but they would know. Uh, you could put in check dams, you can have turnouts, uh, anything to slow down uh, uh, the stormwater. Uh, plunge pools, four bays, um, and technical solutions, uh, filters and things like that. So they, they, uh, they're the experts and I'm sure they know about funding sources and uh, it would be good to coordinate with them and make sure they're aware of all these hotspots. Okay, okay. Any other questions out there for Jim? No. Uh, is this what is the next step, uh, Mary Ellen? As far as this report, I mean, do we have to look at it at the and have a town look at it to finalize it, or is it considered final, uh, uh, Jim? From your perspective? Well, what 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 towns do is they adopt uh, the NRI with a uh, local law. That's what uh, Mount Kisco did. That uh, gives it a little more standing. Uh, but even if they don't, 
it's uh, in the POCD. It's to be referred to for land use applications. And the POCD says it's to be used as a guide for potential open space acquisition. So whether it's adopted uh, officially or not, it's uh, up to you to, uh, you know, put the teeth into it. Mm -hmm. And again, I'd be happy to, of course, uh, uh, present to the town council, but I'd really like to have your feedback and tell, tell me, like Jim, just take that slide number five out or whatever you think is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Well, personally, I'd like to let them all know that, you know, it's whatever classification the Pocahontas Valley is, I think everybody really should know that. Uh, I would and agree with that. If it's designated as polluted or whatever, I think a lot of people walk the valley, they look at all oh, my, you know, the stream is beautiful, everybody's happy, but it'd be, you know, if the residents found out what the reality of the situation was, then that may change, you know, some people's mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely um, agree to leave the, the good, the bad, and the ugly in there. It's the reality. It, it's what it is. And we can choose whether or not we do anything with it. Um, but I wouldn't want to take anything that, quote, looks bad as long as it's not a you know, private homeowner, you know, lawsuit type issue. But if it's a general issue like that, I think we should leave it in. Good. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, there's some areas that you focused on, like Hidden Pond, for example, that, you know, there had been, uh, there, there's an approval for development there. It was approved probably 10 years ago, um, and it's just sitting there. Um, and these are things that need to be revisited uh, because the land has changed. Um, as you said, now it's, it's pretty solidly wetland in there, and it was 10 years ago. Um, but we do have some of these uh, very vulnerable locations that may have been earmarked for development. Um, some have been cleared, but never developed. Um, and, you know, this is a good document for us to get a, a you know, 36,000 foot look at our town and uh, some of the areas, how they're connected. Um, you know, that, that on that Daniels Farm Road area, that's, that's 10 acres. Uh, you look at that on any GIS map and it's it's amazing. This big, beautiful 10 acre woodland there. And we're looking at that disappearing fairly soon with a housing development. So um, I think it's time to take this information and uh, you know make it official and make it a tool for us, just like Jim said, for uh, use by our land use boards, just like our Pequannock River watershed plan is, just like the uh, um, natural, um, uh, the, the, um, the flooding um, documents that we have to do for FEMA uh, every couple of years, those are documents that we use all the time. So, uh, so this, is, this is great. I'm so excited about this. This was actually a, a document that we uh, had, was gonna be the first thing that we did as a conservation commission um, in uh, 2000, gosh, what was it, 2009. Uh, and so it's taken this long to, to get it done and approved. And uh, Jim came into our lives and put on his hiking boots and did it for us. So I'm very thankful. Uh, this uh, is labor of love. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, Jim, if you figured out, I think you made a $1.50 an hour on this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I think it's maybe, fantastic. Maybe think, in yen. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's fantastic, and uh, yeah. I can't wait for you to present it to the, you know, the town council. Yeah, I'm very happy they're interested, and I will say, Jim, when I saw this photo, you know, on the cover page, and that's very impressive. I mean, you know, the people are going to see that, and if you like, you know, natural beauty. I mean, that says a lot right there. I mean, who would have thought it? Yep. that would have would be in trouble? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it is, and so. Um, you know, we, we should, you know, uh, uh, you know, maintain the beauty of Trumbull. It's one of the assets we have. It's stuff like this. So we're um, also close to, you know, the trains and highways. So, um, which can be good or bad, but, you know, it, it's a great little place to live. Yep, and I think we just got a comment from Richard Gerard, who's the chairman of the Inland Wetlands uh, and Watercourse Commission. So he would like to coordinate his 
uh, commission to uh, get and you know watch the Zoom when it's presented to downtown council as well. So um, I think that's great. So thank you, Richard, for uh, yeah. for jumping in on this. It would be nice to have um, land acquisitions um, see this as well. So um, so if the town council meetings November fifth, um, it looks like we've got a week to get out the information to uh, to the other staff and um, and town commissions to get on. Well, board. is the meeting? I've heard a couple of conflicts with the town council meeting being the second. Is it the fifth or is it the second? I wonder. Uh, well, let's see, Mary Beth. Is sustainable was going to um, have a teeny role in that? Yes, correct. That's right. So it's sustainable uh, CT presentation. And um, the chair of town council thought that it was a good meeting. That's the, the fifth. Um, it makes sense to add it to the report because they're going to talk about the purchase adjacent to the rails to trails, which is highlighted in this. Um, so it's the fifth. So yeah, everybody's okay. saying, huh? All the town council people are saying it's the fifth. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, they probably know. <laughs> yeah, I think they do. Yeah. So Don and Kevin have jumped in and said it's the fifth. Okay. Okay, good. And I think sustainable also can, you know, use this, you know, going forward. That's some of our actions. A sustainable covers pretty much everything from A to Z, from natural resources to the community and traffic and you name it. Um, so this, so uh, Jim, you added, you made two two cents an hour, but this was of high benefit <laughs> to the town. And, <laughs> That's all and that matters. And hopefully enjoyed it. Oh, it's a labor yeah. of love, as I said. Yeah. Beautiful spot. Yeah. Yep. Great. And on that, that photo, you have on the left side, left middle, I see some uh, some blocks. I wonder what the history of that was. What, there might have been an old bridge or something there at one time. I think I've seen that. There's an ice house uh, on the West Bank. Uh, of course, at the very northern part of the park was the old uh, woolen mill uh, and another mill, I think. And uh, what you're looking at right there, I'm not sure exactly what that was. It looks like, uh, I bet there was a mill there. That's the way they would kind of force the water into a, a sluice, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. You know, just one quick, you know, side note is for education of interest, you can uh, put QR codes, you could literally take at you know, least four by four posts slanted and plant a very small QR code, which can be easily printed. And that would link to a website, which of course somebody would have to maintain and put stuff there. But that could, if somebody had a site or some of the erosion along the trail, and we want to highlight that you have a QR code and you know any any phone that can read QR codes could then take you to the website and you learn more about that that may be more you know to younger generations but well, these are great scout projects because all the trails can use uh, more blazes to clarify and educational signs to show people what they're looking at and tell them how they can do it at home yeah Yep. And we have a, a Donna, the expert sign maker at uh, uh, Old Mine Park, put that kiosk up. Uh, That's which is nice. Great. Yeah, it does. It's a good example. Yeah. Well, this was wonderful, Jim. Thank you so much for. Thanks. For and thank you, Bill, for uh, figuring out the audio. Sure, not a problem. <laughs> All right. So it's uh, 827. So I will. Uh, um, Unless anybody else has any comments, or um, I will, I will close the meeting, and uh, we will post and look forward to um, hopefully getting this on the agenda for the town council meeting, which is the fifth of November at seven thirty, um, and uh, you know get maybe some more folks in the town to see this. 
So um, thank you everybody for your attention and Jim for your hard work. Um, and it was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks for your attention, for bearing with me. I know oh, Zoom is difficult. Thanks, Jim. We appreciate it. Hey, thank Thanks, you. Jim. Quick, quickly, could, should, could, you, could probably upload this to uh, our website, assuming we can do that. Uh, yes, Bill is rec has recorded it. It is still recording. So um, that's a good point. We can upload it to our website. No, I did. Um, some of you saw that I did. Uh, Jim sent me the um, PowerPoint for the two previous presentations, um, which I put up on Google Drive that Sustainable has. And so these are files that we could, you know, put up as a PowerPoint type presentation as well. You know, and that's appropriate and everything. Yeah, so Kevin uh, Shively says we should put it on uh, TCTV in their video archives. Trumbull oh. Community Television. Good. So maybe we can look into that. Richard, do you want to look into that to see sure. how to get it on there? Sure. All right. I'm sure Bill can help us with that. Excellent. And I guess, um, now Jim, this is a PowerPoint uh, file, yes. I'm assuming. Uh-huh. Um, I can send you, it to you again. Yeah, that'd be you great. You want me to send it to you? Yeah, yep. that'd be great. And then I'll, I'll send it to you now. Okay. And then I'll look into how to get it on okay. our, our uh, local TV. Great. That would be great. Who is the current contact over there? Uh, I do not know. Because I talked yeah. to somebody at a town meeting maybe two years ago, and I, if he's still there, then I think I have his name. The, uh, Lara, Lara Walden is um, the person that you're going to want to speak with in sh our email. Uh, her email is um, trumbletv at trumbleps.org. I'm sorry, Bill, I was Trumble. I'm sorry, the at Trumble. Uh, trumbletv at trumbleps.org. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, and have a good night. And all I don't right. say safe driving because you're all home. So all right, thank you, Mary Ellen. All right, safe walking upstairs or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> don't fall up the stairs. All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thanks a lot, Jim.